this is Diamond Art. I'm going to show you how I made this picture from start to finish. So let's get started on the journey. Hi, Anna. This is another one of my hobbies. It's called Diamond Art. This is the beginning canvas. On it, or with it in the kits, you get a bunch of little beads in kind of a diamond shape, so they sparkle. That's why it's called Diamond Art. The object is to place these little beads onto the canvas. And I'm going to show you the start of that step. I'm not going to show you show you my doing this all. That is a whole lot of work to be done. But what I will do is I'll show you how I begin it. And I will start with the dark number two. I'm not starting with one. Um, and what that one and two means is there is a table. So two or any of these spots, and let me zoom in a little bit. There we go, bees. So any of these little spots with bees, I stick this particular color in. Back up to the table. So you see, all the way down, they've given me all of these colors in the kit. And all of those colors will eventually go on here. Got the camera sort of lined up so you can see what I'm doing. What comes in the kit, and I'll show you, is a nice little tray. Maybe I should zoom out for this. That you put the diamond beads in. Get a little pick wand, whatever they call it in order to place the beads in place. Of course, you get your canvas and you get your beads. Now I've cut this bead open. You don't want to put all in at once, just a little bit. Save the rest for later. If you give this tray a little shake, it lines those beads up, most of them, because they've got a flat bottom and then a diamond top. Oops, I already picked one up. Let's get that off there until we get... The kit will also come with the little sticky. And I thought I was recording earlier, so I'd already done it, but I'll sort of show you. You basically grab some of the sticky on the end here, and that enables you to pick up the beads and place them in place. I'll turn this and get at it. The canvas is covered by plastic, and the reason is this is sticky because the diamonds beads will sit on it. Since what I have is B, I hope that, yeah, I'm now going to zoom in so you can see. The letters. What I'm going to do is take my wand. So you can see what I'm doing. I will gently place it down, pick up a bead, take it over, I'll get down to the corner, that's where I'll start. There's a bead here, I'll place it on. Pick up another bead, onto the bead. Another one, onto the bead. If you notice, there there is a large end, and for areas like this where there's a great number of beads together, and if you like doing it that way, let's see if I can show you, pick up six beads at once. Am I still on? Let me get it on here. Make sure I'm lining up on the bees. And I can lay all of them down. Hello. I realized I gave you really quick instructions on how to do this, kind of like you know how to do it, so I'm just going to go on. Let me go through it again. Here's the packet. 
packet's got a little number on it. That number corresponds with the table. This particular packet is a G. So I've cut the corner. I'm going to pour some of the diamonds into the container, not a whole lot. Put the rest of the pack back for later. Scratch the container that moves the beads so they're sitting face up and easy to use. The wand. I prep. I think I showed you that before. Putting a little sticky on it. That makes the tip sticky. So that when I go to hit a bead, it sticks. And then I can place the bead in its spot, lay it down. I can do these one at a time. There's a G here. Or the other side, which has also been prepped just the same, I can use it to collect six at once. So I've got a spot here that I can put six in, line it up, push them down. Sometimes they need to be rearranged a little bit. And then you can go back in and fill around it one at a time. A little extra red is will eventually move off it does. Some people like to just simply do it one at a time. It is relaxing. So they enjoy the repetition. I'm looking for more G's. That one got moved in the wrong spot. Put it back where it belongs. I've got a G here. Looking to make sure that a G or an S. No, it's an S. Now the other thing, when you are through with a color, you now have them in the bin. This is all of it. This was O. O on my table actually had a number of 3799. Now I did have another kit that had a 3799, so I've got a baggie already made. On the other one, this is D. It is 3750. I did not have one made, so I made one up. In the kit, occasionally baggies will come with it. Uh, sometimes not enough. In this particular kit, they gave me some baggies, but not enough for the whole thing. But that's all right, because I'm doing this a lot. I bought myself a box of these little baggies. Great little thing for storing. So I put the number on it, because that number will continue from one kit to another. Whereas the D and... The number 15 and those num those does not continue on. But the color number, yes, that does. So I've opened the bag. I've got all, I poured the rest of the kit bag in here. And then very gently, because it does have a little pour spout, pour it into your little baggie. So that you get another kit where they don't give you enough. You got spares. You decide to create your own design. You've got colors to do that. You do other crafts where you can use little beads. They're here. Now the one that already has beads, because this is from the other two that I've done already. I simply only open up that bag and add these to it. If you do different kits, some kits come with only one of these. This one came with, well, it was four different designs, so it came with six. Keep these. This is really great because, as you saw, I had two going at once. Basically, it was the letter D and the letter O. They looked very much alike, 
So I was doing both of them at the same time. And being two distinct colors where I could tell them apart, it was easy to keep two trays going. So when I came up with a D, I'd grab a D. Came up with an O, I'd grab an O. So this gives you a little bit more how-to than I did at the beginning and hope this helps those that has never done this before. The other trick I do, I have saved the cover from one of the old ones. So if I'm working in this spot here, which is where this is at, but you see it's sticky over here, so that my hand don't stick, I cover it up. That way I've got several sheets I can cover up and just leave the one little section I'm working on so I can lay my hand down and not stick. It's just a little trick that I picked up and learned. And again, no biggie. Just keep the sheet from one kit to the next. Now you've noticed that I've zoomed in, which is a little hard to do for some people like me who don't have the greatest eyesight. So another piece of equipment I use, which if anyone does crafts might be a good idea to get. Let me zoom back out again so I can show you, is a magnifying mirror. It clips on to my little table. I can move it around and it allows me to do the zooming in without a camera and definitely helps me in doing this and all of some of my, my other arts. I think you saw me use it with uh, threading um, my wind chimes. Lovely piece of equipment. I love it. Others use different ways of doing it, but this gives me hands free. It gets it set up and lets me do it. It's a nice little thing to have if you do crafts. So like I says, I've showed you the steps. I'm not going to show you me doing all of this. Once I finish this particular one, the B, I'll take another picture and show you how that's done. And then I will continue on, not in order, but I'm going to continue doing the darker colors. I say darker because they're not all blacks. It may look like they are, but it's like the B, the K, the R, the W, the D, the O, they're all going to be different shades of black, gray. It will make a difference. And I'll show you each of those steps as they're done. And then you'll see the finished picture. Hope you enjoy this journey. Status, one color down. Still have the plastic on to kind of protect it. Color I finished was B. So all the Bs are covered. And what you do need to check when you do this, I'll kind of let you see. I can keep the color down. There's a lot of the B at the bottom. And it worked its way up. As you see, not all this dark color is a B. And you do have to look like that. There's just one little B there. And you think you were done because it didn't see any Bs up here. But when I did a real good check on it, you can see one there, a couple up here, a few over on the side. You do have to check. So that's one color down. The next color I'm going to do now is the W's. I'm staying in with the dark. It's not a black. It's a deep, deep, deep blue. The W is finished. It's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two, but if you get close enough, you can see... A little bit difference in shading between them. A little bit easier here. This is the W. That was the B. Just a little tiny difference in shading. A little bit more has now been accomplished. As well as some of this up here at the top now. And on to the third color. Real quick, I've got the next basically two colors done. The reason I did two at the same time was because one was D, one was O, 
and D and O on this looked really, really close together. Uh, D was a blue, O a gray, so I could tell the two apart. So I went ahead and did both of them at the same time. That just kind of saved me since I had to re look real close at D's to see if they were done or not, and the O was right there. I figured I could do both at the same time. And there wasn't that many O's. It was just, if I open this up, very few. But they sat right next to this lighter blue here is the D's. So, plastic back to cover, come back up. Slowly getting there, on to the next color. One more color finished. When it's, we're working more on the blues now, coming into lighter colors. So, slowly getting there. One more of the blues done. As you can see, we're starting to fill in a lot more. Definitely starting to look good. You're starting to see it sparkle. I'm going to go on to another blue. Next color done is this light, lighter blue. Not much. But it's sprinkled throughout the whole picture. So, next step. I actually got a couple of colors done before doing the filming again. It was the light blues. And I just got into it and just kept going without remembering to stop and actually film. That's alright, I don't need to see every single color being done. Hello. Okay, I got a light blues done. I've actually did two or three of them. I can't remember the last time I filmed. I just got into it and just started doing it. And so I did all these light blue colors without realizing I didn't film. But that's the light blues that are done. And I'm going to zoom in. And let you look down here. Got P's and C's. They sit close together. You kind of look around. They do all over the place. The two go together. And what those basically are are this light grayish green and this very light green. So I've got two trays set up with the two colors. That way I can do both of them at once since they sit together and I don't have to keep moving the canvas around. Quick way to get work done, which is why I say keep the little trays. You can use them this way. Okay, I got those last two colors done. And we're down to the reds and the... I'll say whites, but they're not really all white. Just like it's not really all reds. There'll be some shading. Yeah, got all that in here now. Really starting to look really, really nice. So on to the next. This time I actually did four colors together. All the reds and pinks. So it really wasn't that much. And there are four different colors in these. Did two colors again. We're into the light colors now. Basically, I did a very, very light green, almost a white. In fact, you're not seeing the green color on the camera. And a very light grayish color. So, only three colors left. I will do two more, one more picture, and then I will do the final color. Down to one last color. So if we come in, all you'll see is T's. Everything else has been filled in. And 
and we're almost through. Gorgeous dragon. So I'll be back when I finish the teas. We're finished, and there's one last step they tell you is to get a press down, you press with your hands, you get a book. What I like to use is the rolling pin. Now you can buy rollers, but I'm sorry, the rolling pin works just fine. And this helps to kind of press them down, make sure it gets a good seal against that sticky glue. Just very gentle. And I didn't get this side, so we'll go through it one more time. And they're set and done. So now with rolling pin done and everything in, give you a quick overview. As you're doing that, you can see it sparkle. And back up so you can see the whole thing. And there's my dragon. I like it. Hope this gave you an idea of what diamond art's like. And how much fun it can be to do. It's very relaxing. Go up, find some frame. Put it up on my wall. And if you enjoyed my video, please press the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't, and the notification bell so you know when my next video is out. Thank you.